All right, KISS Army, welcome to the KISS FAQ Podcast. Thank you for giving us your time today. Nothing is into your head. I hope we don't do any damage. We hope that you enjoy. 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 Welcome to episode 373 of the KISS FAQ Podcast. This is a bonus item because it gets me out of having to do a show this week. Yeah. <laughs> um, I got Andy with me. Andy, good to see you, buddy. It's been oh, it's been too long, you know, and I saw that picture you posted this morning on Facebook of you with an Aerosmith fan. And I found that really touching that you thought of me. <laughs> and I thought it even better that you were willing to stand next to another Aerosmith fan after being dragged around New England visiting all those places that you never really wanted to know about in the first place. But uh I thought that was uh, cool. I you know Everybody knows, if you don't know, I am not an Aerosmith fan. I have never been an Aerosmith fan. And, and now now it's just a joke between Julie and I, you know. So, because Julian hates poison. So, I, I just bring up the thing with the poison thing. <laughs> he brings up the thing with the Aerosmith thing. So, we have a little fun with it. But you mentioned, it, like, when you came here to New England. I, I actually had a lot of fun with you. Like I said, I am not an Aerosmith fan. But I did have a lot of fun with you going to these places because it's interesting how many Aerosmith places are actually still around and a lot of the early Kiss stuff is actually gone. Yeah. So it was interesting in that way. So don't get me wrong. I had a blast with you. <laughs> yeah, and, and come on, from that, you, you nailed it right there, because all those KISS sites are gone. They're parking lots, they're buildings. I stood on the second ever stage that they played. I went to the school where they played their first ever show. We went to the, we got in the auditorium for the third show they ever played. We went to the barn, where they basically came together. You know, we went to the Anchorage, where Joe met Stephen. So, you know, from that point of view of history, it was really cool. But I bet there is still a really good bunch of places in New York, too, and also, you know, the tri-state oh. area um, yeah. that can be visited. And I think someone's got to put that grand tour together of what is there, even if it is a parking lot, because we go to the loft when we talk about KISS. And I've still got the photo of me looking up at the loft. We go to Sarge's, and I, I got to ask Andrew to see if Sarge's ended up in that uh, Madison Square book that the the Kiss uh, Army Spain people did and I got to get that order today if there's still copies. Hmm? I got it. I just got it uh yesterday. It, it finally showed up. It kind of got lost in the mail, I guess, but uh my copy showed up and no, I don't think the Sargis is in there. That should it, have been in there because that's an important I, story that you told me when I was in New York and we yeah. went there because that I was think, where Paul Stanley went after the freaking show. You know, there he is. He's just headlined the Madison Square Garden for the first time in 1977, but uh, the social challenges of his life uh, that he had no real friends at that time that he felt well, he could he could <laughs> share with so he goes to Sarge's Deli. So so that's, uh, you know, f just like I started at the top there talking about the Aerosmith sites, that's one of those places in New York that if you're a hardcore deep fan, you'll know about. And I didn't, I'm not a hardcore deep fan, obviously. Uh, I, I went to the, I went to this freaking subway corner and he's like, no, we're going to lunch here. And this is why. And you're like, oh, okay, Andy. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, there's another thing too. Believe it or not, I've been working on, because you said, you said kiss, you know, places in New York. I actually been working on through I don't know five ten years or more on on Kiss spots in New York. You know, not just the regular Dress to Kill, which I love because that's my first album. But I mean, like where Peter Chris, like where Jr. used to get certain makeup, and he used to get like he got like Peter Chris drum and and drumsticks and stuff like that i went to the places you know i asked if i could video some of the stuff i had put videos up when we were there in new york during that peter chris weekend thing uh the expo there and in places right so there were a lot of places still around but you got to kind of dig deep for them some of buildings they don't even and maybe that's in. a maybe that's a project i've shouted about you know I, I want the aussies and it's got to be an australian doing it i'm happy to help and give you all the material i've got for the unmasked tour but we need the aussies to get off their arses while they're locked down and start putting together the 1980 definitive book look what kiss army spain has just done for madison square garden that's kiss army spain honoring madison square garden so yeah. I I would like it more to be that the Aussies honor their era, you know, 80, 
uh, because that's Kisteria Super Kiss. Um, I would love that more than anything, but I would also like these places. I've got a ton of receipts from the crew, uh, from pre anyone else in the crew. So guys like Moose and them buying tassels, buying single drum bits and pieces in 73 and early 74 for the Canadian, the first Canadian tour. And then out on the road, I've got repair bills from Nashville when they're on the road, trucks breaking down, you know, so sites like that, even see if they still exist i don't know uh music shops i got aces you know going in right before recording the um studio album and buying 100 picks you know uh paul guitar repairs uh manny's i think I, i've got so many receipts i don't have you know i don't know how many but again there's still a lot of um you know, hardcore fan books to be made by those who are willing to take on the project, not sell it in advance of it being fucking done and ready for sale. And I think you'll probably still be able to get fan input um, if you've got someone organizing it with, number one, the skills to do so and an unsullied reputation. So let's talk, you know, that's a whole but, but, other b ball of wax. I know, but let me, let me say this. I just got the Spain book. When they asked me, when they got in touch with me, they're like, hey, Andy, man, I know you're a huge fan. Do you have anything from New York? And I'm from New England, but I did go to four shows through the years. You know, uh, the reunion, second night, Sonic Boom, Alive 35, and one more. I'm sorry, I'm going right. But I did donate. I didn't even care. I said, the world needs to see this stuff. I know people hoard this stuff, and they want, like, huge money to be able to see it. It's like, come on. I'm getting kind of ridiculous about some of the stuff I, I get i don't know maybe it's just me now maybe getting older and i just don't care in that way it's like you know I, I i donated a lot of pictures that i took that i had and then i donated like say donated i just took pictures of the right pictures and and then uh newspapers you know like the day after the shows i had grabbed many newspapers i could find and i sent them so uh, looking through the book really quick it looks really cool there's a lot of awesome photos if you like photos and stuff and some stories you should check out that book. You know, some of my photos are in there. It's not just because of my photos in there. There's a lot of other people's photos and his stories and stuff. Like I said, I looked through it really quick this morning because I got it last night right before we took off to see uh, <clears throat> this guy behind me. <laughs> well, I'm, and, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wrap up this section on Madison yeah, Square Garden. Right. I'd just like to give a shout out to Lonnie Ken and... Oh, Andrew. Sorry, Andrew. Uh, who, who did the show without me while I was in Hawaii. Uh, thanks, guys. I watched that on the flight back. That was really entertaining. And I say that that lineup needs to do more shows independently. I don't need to be there. That was really entertaining. That's a good quality podcast that I will happily support. So you guys rock. Last thought on Madison Square Garden. I made the pilgrimage to Madison Square Garden specifically to see Kiss at that venue because it is almost holy ground. It is their home town it is the place where they said that that was where they felt they had finally made it and the place that they aspired to playing in order to quantify the measure of their success so i flew san fran to newark into the city uh stayed across the street i walked around videoing that place i took hundreds of photos i gave all that shit to andrew to use for his one last kiss um you know video project and all that so uh it, it really was holy ground to sit in the city where they came from with a New York, New Jersey crowd, sorry, Jersey. Um, you know, it, it really was one of those things. And that's why I did the forum as well, uh, exactly for those reasons. Those two venues, left coast, right coast, um, just the things that you have to do, in, in my mind, as a, a fan who came aboard, you know, 85, a little bit late. That's the only way I can overcompensate for my inadequacies in terms of my longevity <laughs> as a KISS fan for those who say, you're not a real KISS fan. All right, let's talk about that crazy guy behind <laughs> you. You went to the show. You nearly did not go to the show and this is of course ace frelly opening up for alice cooper the guys have gone on road uh the band members on ace's band have put out posts saying don't talk to us don't come near us we're in a bubble we want to stay safe we got to have the band safe respect that please it's very important with these bands trying to go out on tour that they are able to stay healthy they are able to you know you know number one you make your decisions about going as an audience participation member but the bands are in a much more more uh, restrictive kind of situation that anyone getting 
say Alice Cooper sick is gonna not have a fucking good reputation in the industry if they've broken outside the bubble. So respect any band members, whether it's Alice Cooper band, whether it's Ace Frehley, and you know, be cool about it. That you think they don't want to shake your hand, get together for a beer, you're wrong. But they want to play music for you. And that's what you're there for. So you nearly didn't make it. Give, give us the quick skivvy on what's been going on, man, because you're skinny as fuck, and I'm jealous as hell. <laughs> well, uh, well, I had to lose some weight anyways because I was uh, diagnosed last August with uh, non-alcohol fatty liver disease. So they told me the best thing was, you know, of course not drink alcohol, so I'm not a big drinker of alcohol anyway, so it wasn't a big deal. Uh, cut out all sugar drinks, which... Okay, not a big deal. The biggest thing, the hardest thing is probably, it says they, if you can, cut out red meat. So that means anything like, you know, hamburger, steaks, that kind of stuff. Anything that's a livestock, basically try to cut out or really cut back thing. And kind of went cold turkey, you know, so, and it means eating turkey, chicken, you know, all that kind of stuff. And cut back really into red meat. So I dropped a lot. I was at. Because I had got sick, uh, I was at like a 240, then I got, got down to uh, the weight I'm supposed to be, technically about like 200, I was dropped down 199, now everything was good, and then, weird, I had a, uh, an appointment to go see the doctor, all of a sudden I got up on a Wednesday, I wasn't feeling good, I felt like fatigued, like almost like before you get the flu, so I went to the doctor, and then all of a sudden the next day I got up, <clears throat> I had the fatigue, and next, you know, I was sweating. I had a fever, and the next, you know, I'm in the emergency room. Uh, they thought I had COVID. I didn't have COVID. They couldn't figure out what was going on with me, but they sent me home. The next day, I went back to the emergency room because things were getting worse. Uh, I couldn't kick the fever, and I mean the fever. It was over 100 the whole time, the whole time I was through all this stuff. So it was running from 100 to 100, almost, uh, it was like 103. Uh, the second time they let me go, which I think is bad news. Uh, uh, they let me go at like 3 a.m. with 103, and I was really sick. And you had Nobody massive knows. headaches, didn't you, as well? I mean, it, you, it wasn't just was, fever. You were in agony. Yeah, and then all of a sudden my brain was like, it was like a balloon. You stop blowing up a balloon. That's the only way I can explain it. And it got it, and it got to the shell of my core of my head, and it wanted to burst. So that's how I felt. And it's way, because Kim gets migraines here and there, or people get migraines, and it's usually across your eyes and across your front. But my headache was here, here, going down like this, and through my neck, and all the way back. So every time, you know, I was coughing. So every time I coughed, everything shook, went up, and my head was going to explode. I had never felt everything like this. There is no rhyme or reason why this happened to me. It just happened. So then all of a sudden, I went back to uh, Kim had called the doctors to send a message through a thing called my chart. If anybody don't know my chart, you get all your info right really quick. Telling the doctor, and he's on the bed. He's going to die. You got to get, you got to do something. So basically, they said, get him there. So I, I barely got to the car. I could barely walk. Then the car Kim brought me into the emergency room for the third time. Went in there and it was on. I basically was collapsed and they brought me in. And next thing you know, they're like, hey, we're going to do CAT scans on you. We're going to do one plane and then they shoot the liquid in you. They do another one, liquid to find out stuff. So they did that. And then they're like, hey, Andy, man, we got to do a spinal tap on you. And I was like, what? We got to do a spinal tap, Andy. We don't know what's going on, but you're, you're you know, I, I'm in bad shape. So next thing you know, they had me sit up and then lean kind of like four like this, and he said, don't move. And I'm like, I have a fever. I'm like throwing up. I don't know what's going on. I had to sign all this paperwork. There were like two or three other doctors that came in uh, with another doctor while I signed the paperwork for the spinal tap. They had to sign things. And then when it came in, there were like six or seven people. There was some uh, new person watching, and they were all around me. And they basically said, don't move. And you're like, you're going to feel this. They gave me a shot. It felt like five shots through my back. And the next, you know, they're all like talking about it. And I'm just like leaned over because I'm so sick and I'm like out of it. And they're like doing a spinal tap on me. They're sticking needles in my back. I couldn't feel them. And they're pulling out, you know, they're going into your spine and open needles to pull out to see if they can find out what's going on with me. So by that time, they had to admit me. Uh, I had posted some a video. I could barely talk. I was such an agony. So the virus basically 
Uh, went through my whole body, of course, to get the fever, coughing, chills, the whole nine yards, throwing up, you know, diarrhea, all that kind of yucky stuff. So when it is, the virus went into my brain and this thing called menges or menge, menges, menges, something. It's a soft tissue around your brain. Well, it was tacking that part. And basically, and if it gets in, you're either going to be uh, disabled, mentally disabled or it's gonna, you're going to die. So that's the point I was at. That's basically what they told me. So they were trying to now stop this from doing that. because Especially getting... with a delayed diagnosis and sending you home on multiple occasions, which at the second time, to the point where you're home. begging for health care, you know, with a life, meningitis is a life-threatening fucking disease. Yeah, and if you look up like meningitis B, the symptoms were basically like that to the to the T, you know. So I, it was very bizarre. I don't know why they can't explain why or what the reason was. But then next, you know, I'm in I'm in you know mid, mid and I only thought I was there for like three days. And Kim's like, you've been here for like six days. That's how much I was out. I just had no clue or nothing. I was a complete zombie. <laughs> My head was pounding, <laughs> and I'm, you know, I'm not, you know, I'm lucky I'm here. That's all I can say. I don't know for rhyme or you reason. Are. That's all it is. I am one lucky SOB. I'll tell you that. That's all I. That's that's all I know. And I couldn't believe it. And my goal was to get to Ace because I knew Ace was coming up. If it was pushed back like a half a week or a week later, I probably wouldn't have gone to Ace last night. Or Kim would have had to basically push me in a wheelchair. Because that was my goal, to at least go see Ace. That was the thing. So I don't know. So I'm still on medication. i got to take it three times a day for another week or so just to make sure. And and all I can say is thanks, everybody. Thanks for the shout-out. I know the guys on, uh, you know, Kiss FAQ gave me a shout-out. And, and a lot of people were trying to get, send messages. A lot, of, a lot of people were worried. I mean, when Andy Moyan drops off Facebook, shit's real. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, come come on, you know, and and you hadn't been home that long, so I was, you know, concerned whether you were going to make it to Ace, whether it was smart for you to go to Ace or uh, what. So let's let's get out of our, you know, our our personal drama. Yeah. You are here, you are healing. You're going to be a good boy now, right? You're not going to overdo it, please, um, because I I, lo I love your reports and I want the vibrancy that you bring to Kiss fandom out there. So I want you healthy as quickly as possible because we need more people with your enthusiasm in this world so your health nearly made you not go last night uh yeah. but you still put on the war paint and the costume and uh, you got your ass there but let's talk ace now um all right. obvi well, obviously obviously it's exciting that he's hitting the road and it's the one year anniversary of origins volume two being released because i believe that came out nine eight I, I should know this but i don't remember i believe it came out september the 18th you know same date obviously as the kiss um solo albums in 1978 um let's start with ticketing for this event all right here we go all right you know i'm supposed to be positive about all this stuff because you know i'm here <laughs> but let me say this virtual ticket thing sucks what a nightmare i mean i hate it number one because i always like a hard coffee man so you can put it in your little frame and shit. That's, that's just the coolest stuff ever, right? I hate it. And trying to figure it out, and then all of a sudden you got to do this, got to do that. I gotta... We get to the parking lot because I bought, you know, I pre bought the parking thing too, right? Get that over. So I get to the, we get to the parking lot. I can't open it up. Kim's thing, you know. So we brought a printout. I'm glad I brought a printout saying, you know, two tickets and one extra, and the one extra means the parking. So we're standing there, and they're like, you know, have it all out when you're driving up, and it's saying, the guy's looking at, you know, the guy's looking at us like, you're holding up the line. I'm like, here it is on paper, but I can't get the phone to open up because uh, well, we're on, you know, upstate New Hampshire. So we're in Lick, Lick in New Hampshire, and I, I don't know, the Verizon maybe doesn't work as good up there or something. So I can't get it to open, and the guy after a while is like, hey, you know, he's going to call the front office with his walkie-talkie. says, can you check on it? And they wouldn't get back to him, so the guy's just like, go. <laughs> you know, finally. So then... We're in the parking lot, right? This is not a kiss show, so it's weird to me, right? So here I am, and I'm thinking, man, should I wear the face? Should I wear the wall paint and suit? I, I feel pretty good the last couple of days. So I said, I told Kim, I'm like, it's all right if I do it. She's like, oh, okay, but just be careful, you know, because I'm supposed to be. 
got to be careful what's going on because I'm still on meds and I'm supposed to take my third pill at like nine or 10 o'clock at night. And of course I can't not bring it into the arena with me. So I'm not going to take it. So anyways, I start dressing up stuff in it and all these people are asking me, it's kind of weird. So how is ACE? I've never seen ACE before. Really? And the crowd, the people around a little bit, you know, older, let's just put it that way. There's younger ones there, but most of the generated guy was a little bit older. If you know what I mean? And people are asking me about Ace. Oh, my God, is Ace playing with Alice Cooper? I'm like, no, oh, he's playing in front of Alice Cooper. He is? <laughs> it was very, they're very mellow. People are very mellow. It's not a kiss crowd at all. Like, So by the time I got the war paint on and the love gun suit that Megan made for me, awesome, if anybody needs a hit, costumes, anything, she'll do anything. She's really good at it. Uh, I put on the suit and stuff, and then people are like, Timid to come intimidated to me, come up like, is it okay if I take a picture of you? I'm like, well, you want a picture with me? Oh, I can. It was very weird. Like, they were like people were like, wow, you must be getting. And I'm like, no, you, you gotta. Be, if you ever go to a kiss show, people like take tons and tons of pictures. Yeah. And here was one, one here, one there, one here, one there. It was very bizarre. It was very bizarre. So then, so then, me and Kim like start walking to get to. Because this is an outside thing, but it's small. Not that small. I think it's 9,500. I think it says it holds. So anyways, so we're walking, and here and there, people would ask me for a picture. And they're like, ace, ace, ace. And I'll, you know, thumbs up. And it's all fun. So then we get to where you security now. <laughs> we get to the security, of course, as always, you know. So I brought, because you could only bring, like, a little purse, and you can bring no bags, but you can bring see-through bag. Mm -hmm. A 12, 12 see-through bag. And I said, you know what, Kim? The way I'm feeling this and that, I should have thought of this. I always do respect with people. I have the costume on, and I'm tall anyways. And then I put up the two, put on the boots. It makes me even taller. So I always say to the people around me, if they're behind me in the seats, I will take the boots off if you can't see. And I'm usually standing there in my socks. So I said, you know what? This time I'm going to take my sneakers with me, and I'm going to put them in a see-through bag. But we couldn't find a see-through bag. But the only bag that we had was from – that was just what was that? Uh, from the kiss store. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So I put, I put my sneakers in it, and I get up to the security thing, and it's this little lady. She must be about 80. So if she's in front, then you go through the metal detectors, and then there's another woman behind <clears throat> with, the, with the extra scanning thing. So I'm standing there. She's looking at my stuff, my phone, and then she sees the bag, and she's like – it's not a clear bag. There's writing on it. And I look at the lady. I'm like, uh, uh, this is the only thing we got. You can see through the bag. They had writing just because it says kiss on it. Or the lady didn't want to let me do it. And then she looks at my sneakers, grabs my sneakers out of the bag, and says, you can't get in here with these. I'm like, uh, why not? And she's like, well, I'm like, you can scan them. There's nothing in them. I'm like, if I get tired or if somebody's behind me, I want to be in my sneakers, not my and the woman's like, the other one's talking to me at the same time. So now I'm having this conversation, a three-way. And the woman says, just let him buy. And then she goes, well, I'm probably going to get in trouble with this. Hey, can I have a picture with you? So the woman behind the table, <laughs> no, she says, I'm, gonna get, I'm probably going to get in trouble for this. Because then the next show, another guy comes up with another one. And I haven't even gone through yet. And then she says, well, just let the guy through. It's fine. It's fine. So they let me through. And another guy next now now the guy comes up. We, we got to scan your boots. I'm like, go ahead, scan the boots. I said they're made, you know, so they don't go off. So they, 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 everything's good. They like finally let me through. But the freaking ticket thing again. So now we walk in. We get to where you do your tickets. You know, you have to you have to show a little, you know, whatever they do, scan the code, whatever. The freaking phone wouldn't work again. And I'm like, this is ridiculous. So finally, Kim's like on the side while I'm talking to him, trying to get the damn thing up. Finally comes up, we get through. So next you know, we walk towards uh, the merch, right? The merch thing. Holy shit. You know, it's kind of like Kiss, but not as bad as Kiss. But the lines were really, really long. And Alice Cooper is selling a lot of stuff. So we get into line, and I'm like, it's getting later. It's getting later. I'm just going to make a suggestion out there. I know nobody's going to see this. They should have an ace line. And Alice Cooper lines for stuff, and then they should have one for if you want both. Because no, 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 that that would make way too much sense, Andy. Forget it. 
because the lines were huge, like huge, but not as huge as Kiss, but still huge. And some woman come out because when we were up there getting stuff, a woman came from the back and she's like, look out. And she's like, oh, my. And it's like Ace comes on at 730 and it's like 715 and the lines are massive, you know. So people are like, oh, my God, you know, people don't want to miss the show, but you're in line. So anyways, so that's what that. So you have the awesome background in probably the shirt. That is really the okay. shirt. I want a triple well, X yeah. of that. If they do triple X, though, I can I can do a two X because I'm getting skinnier too. I want one oh, of those. We'll, we'll talk. Uh, I'll I'll get you one because I did some uh, I did some shopping with people overseas last night, so I'll, I can hook you up if you. Well, we'll yeah, talk hook, about hook me up shirt, if you will, please. Thanks. This shirt is awesome. It looks like it glows in the dark. I thought it glows in the dark, but it doesn't. But this shirt is killer. But there's nothing on the back. But they're fifty bucks. That's what it is. So here is the other shirt, you know, Ace Fury the Origins. That looks good as well. And and you know, yeah, I'm I'm biased about Origins Volume Two, but I dig that. And that's got the tour dates on the back, doesn't it? Yep. It's got uh, you know, all the tour dates on the back. Jesus so they're playing Utica, New York. Yeah, I think they canceled some other place and they're playing Utica, New York. I don't know whatever happened with that. And then there is another uh there's a shirt. All right, here's the pin. They, this is from that Fantasia thing or whatever that is. Yeah, that, those look those are cool. I mean, yeah. So the so the shirt I don't have is like that. It's just the thing with a Z, and then it says Ace Frehley. Right. And that's those fifty bucks too. Even the other shirt's fifty bucks. And then <clears throat> I got this one for the Luddy, Nick Nick Luddy one and Rosie. Nick and Luddy. Yeah, they're like eighty bucks, you know. And it's got oh, I'm trying to. Show, it's got that on the front. You, you know that that's really rem, that makes me think of the original Comet logo. You know, it's for some reason, just yeah. maybe it's, maybe because it's round and I'm very simple. <laughs> yeah, and then this is the back. It looks like that's a badass. Pick. You know, spaceman. Uh, does that have established 1950? Was he 51? New York City. Now I wish they made this this the, like the guitar pick. As it's just a shirt in the front. You know what I mean? That yeah. in the front. To the back. I wish this one had the toe blades on the back, too. You know. I wonder if they could get that onto a guitar pick, all that. That's quite a bit of text, but that's a cool design. I like that. Whoever's come up with that merch has done a good job. But, so Yeah, it's eighty bucks for that. Yeah, it's so. a sweatshirt. You know, you're not just you know, everyone thinks the prices are set by the artist. The venues get a big cut of merch. So, you know, it, it's all offset. There's a lot more to it than just the merch, uh, you know, going into Ace's pocket. Ace wishes he was putting 80 bucks in his pocket because um, they got to pay for this stuff to be made as well as sold. Yeah, and you wouldn't believe it. I figured it out this morning. They actually put tax on me. I just figured it out because I did all the pricing for how much they cost. They, they charged me tax. Oh, well. <laughs> be, be, be happy you're not in California with our tax rates. Yeah, but it's 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 clothing. They've done, I've I've never seen that happen before. Tax on buying the merch. I've never seen that before. Must be a New Hampshire thing. Tax free New Hampshire is supposed oh, to be. Oh, they did it in New York City. Isn't that bizarre? On oh, New York, I understand. So, and also, uh, I, I want to give out to my uh, buddy there from uh, the Ozone group. John. Man. Yeah, it's John. Always, he's always giving out the. I saw your photo with stuff. him, so the salute oh. was freaking awesome. You know, yeah, we, I, I dig yeah. John and the ozone. That's the place to hang for a stuff on Facebook, without a yeah, doubt. He's a good guy. He's a good guy. He's like he always making these new ones in different colors. So this was like a blue and black and with sparkly. He's like, hey, I got sparklies this time. And I said, hey, man, we got to take a rail picture, and then we got to take a one with the finger. And it, we discussed it. Why? He, he laughed. He thought it was hilarious because some people need a to chill out on that group <laughs> oh the, the, the oh after the mask yeah 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 it was pretty funny yeah after the mask thing yeah yeah hey people i had makeup on this time i just didn't wear a plastic rubber mask yeah, you look you, you look good but you know it was weird with your face and the the, the weight adjustment i'm like whoa you know um obviously oh. obviously big difference wearing the war paint it says the guy who's never worn war paint and never will um versus wearing a mask i shouldn't people are always telling me to put on a mask um <laughs> You, you you know it does it does make a big difference but you know for people who get uptight about the difference between it you know it's like fuck you it's just like don't worry <laughs> about it we're just trying to have fun in our own ways with our own reasons do your thing dress up like the village people if it makes
makes you happy. Just Thank enjoy you. enjoy what your life and what you're doing. Hey, there, 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 was, there was that couple that was dressed up as Rain, Wayne's World, right? And I and I, shot, I sent you the picture. The girls wearing the Aerosmith shirt. <laughs> yeah, you, you know, well, you, you're going to a rock concert. There are no rules. I mean, um, you know, I, I was going to go to the Luau in Hawaii wearing Thrash or Die, but I, I think that wouldn't have been such a good <laughs> idea. Number one, my wife would have killed me. Number two, I think they may have killed me. So um, sorry, Ralph. I didn't get to advertise for you in Hawaii. All right, let's talk about the show. Because well, Ace is an opening act. Or did you have something else you wanted to wrap on? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I got to give a shout out to the wife, Kim, because I'll tell you, man. <laughs> the wife, Kim. Yeah, I, Kim I, you yeah. know, she needs a grander title than that, Kim. I know. I, I, I don't want to say queen because people used to queen. I, I just got to say, I love her so much. And see, she's been, she's been through it thick and thin, and she's gone through all her stuff, too. But, man. When I dress up, I have a pocket, so I put, you know, I, I asked that you to put put a pocket in so I could put my phone in it, mm -hmm. but I can't hold a lot of stuff. She held my sneakers. She's got her eyes, the other stuff. She was holding the merch. She was she was taking pictures for, her, you know, because people are like, hey, can I take a selfie? I'm like, well, if you take a selfie, how are you going to get the suit in? And they're like, yeah, I want the shoes and the boots in, and you got to stand back, you know? And that was the other thing, too. Pe people didn't realize, you got to stand back when you take pictures. Kiss, Kiss fans know this, but... All these Alice Cooper fans had no clue. <laughs> they like, they don't want a selfie, but I want your boots in. Man, I, I I'm one of those people. I, you know, with with this trip that I've just done, that. trying to do selfies with my wife and I, I shot so many pictures of my armpit. Uh, you know, they, they, you know, it. Well, short arms. <laughs> Get someone to take the photo yeah. for you. Yeah. So Kim, Kim was, you know, Kim. I, uh, she'll she'll take the photo for you. No problem. Kim's like, yeah, yeah, I'll take the photo. No problem. So Kim all night long was taking photos. Of me with people when they when they when they ask, you know what I mean? So I mean, I can't kind of because because most people would be like, I ain't holding your sneakers all night. Come on. <laughs> so pro props to the wife. I love you. You know she's a sweetheart, and uh, that's that. But uh, yeah, you know, yeah, and I'll I'll just add to that. Kim's a rock star. Kim, you're awesome, <laughs> and you know, thank you for taking care of Andy, the wicked awesome Super Kiss fan. Because uh, <laughs> you know, we need him. We need you too. We need people like you, Kim. Yeah. All right, so let's talk about the show. Um, Ace goes on at seven thirty, so that sounds like jam packed. They're opening up with a piece of music, and I'm just going to start from what I've read about the show this morning, and I haven't read a lot because I'm behind on getting a lot of ebay shit out uh so to everyone who's waiting on your ebay packages i've got 19 <laughs> done so far this morning the rest will be done they're all going in the drop box today except for the big one that i'll have to drop off tomorrow so thank you for your patience while i've been in hawaii i did put the out of office thing on the ebay auctions for all those books and it was all kiss related books so we'll, i'll be doing more now that i'm back in town all right so he kicks off with uh opening music that was kind of turgid. I don't know what it is. I'm going to have to Google that later. Um, and then apparently there was a break and it just kind of stops rather than the going directly into the show. Um, so you take over. You were there. Well, I got to say, if you saw the picture, I posted a picture, man. The backdrop is really cool. Did you see the backdrop? I did, just yeah. Not, awesome. He's really, it's got, it's got the cards and he's got the Saturn. I mean, it's pretty cool, man. I, I'm like, ah, that's nice. You know, that's nice. That's really nice. And of course, uh, you know, they they played. Uh, I forgot. You know, I I I, br I went brain dead too because uh, my uh, my other friend uh, Nikki said I don't know who he is. Nikki was dressed up like Ace as hotter than hell, and I went to go up to see him and say hi. Him and his wife, and we went to say fast. And they were playing something before Ace came on. I forgot. I, I'm just totally lost. I know. Like Are you went to the show and can you remember? Wait, yeah, it, it's uh, someone posted on the FAQ that it's Spack Zarathustra tape intro, and I have no idea what the hell that is. I'm ignorant, I guess. I, I think it was uh, like a kind of like the warning to people that he's coming on because it got louder, a little you know, louder. So, so then, uh, you know, of course, of course, you got the intro, and the guys walk on the stage, and there he is. You know, they say the intro for Ace, you know, you know, from the Bronx, and uh, Ace Freely, you know, and then Ace comes on, and that was my guess too. I me, me and another friend from uh, my, my old pen, pen pal uh, drawn from Tennessee. We, we 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 last week we guessed. We just said we pick fifteen. Pick pick fifteen of your song that you think Ace is gonna play. And, and my first guess is like, you know, he's been doing like rip it out from the beginning, you know. And I'm like, man, man it would be cool if you come out with Rocket Ride. Give him a shot right in the face. Rocket Ride, bingo! Rocket Ride. 
God. <laughs> how did that? How did that work as an opener? Because I'm very. That's got a really weird kind of start in order to to get a show going, especially an Ace Frehley solo show. I'm so used to rip it out because that really that's like stamping your foot down and go. Whereas Rocket Ride's a little bit more um, build up. It'd be a great segue in from an opening piece where they're behind a curtain ready to go. But how'd it work? I, I, I loved it because it's just like, and, 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 you know, and a lot of people know what rock and ride is, you know, you know, a lot of the, and, and there was a, you know, there was some empty seats. There were people like some people like sitting down to watching ACE. I thought it was kind of weird. I don't know if there was a lot, still a lot of people in the merch line or some people like, you know, I never watched the opening act, you know, but uh, I loved it. I thought it was so cool. Cause I'm like, it's finally a little bit different you know it's not just and i love rip it out i know i understand rip it out is a great song to start too but i'm like hey something different nah, 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 yeah, nah, some, nah. and there's the key something different yeah yeah so i, I loved it you know i it, you know you can't really go wrong with a set list he's got so much classic awesome stuff you know what i mean it he doesn't <laughs> he just does you know so, oh, yeah. So, so to me, man, it was a different change up from all the years I've seen them. I'm glad. I'm glad it was different. So thumbs up on the rocket ride to start. Yeehaw. <laughs> all right. So then after rocket ride, he kicks into Parasite. Oh, yeah. Come on, baby. The double punch in the face, right? Come on. The guy wrote the song. The guy can play the song. Right? <laughs> yeah, no, I, no, no one is going to tell Ace Frehley that he can't play Parasite because that is his song, and you know what? It's a goddamn good. Song. I love that song. I love it when Ace oh, does it as well. And there is there is a huge difference from Parasite when Ace plays it to when Kiss plays it, big time. You know what I mean? You could tell a huge difference in the sound. You know, Kiss plays it; it seems like slower. Ace plays it. It's in your face. <laughs> yeah, and that's that's one of the songs where having that lineup of guitarists and, and bass really comes because it gives it a fatness as well. So Ace just gets to wail and do his thing. And again, he plays the notes how they're meant to be played rather than Tommy, who plays the notes without the ace feel you know th there's no way two ways about it to differentiate the guy oh. you know two different guitarists ace wrote yeah. it it's ace's song ace is going to play it and it's going to be acy yeah that hey it is what it is i love it it's all good now song three i thought bizarre strutter great song strutter sorry i ruined your well why i don't get it I love, don't get me wrong. I know he played the guitar. It's a great riff. It's a great song. But why Strutter? I don't understand it. I, I don't get it. He has such, you know, he could have played, like you said, rip it out. You got Snowblind. You know what I mean? You got, you got, you know, rock I, I I get it because that's Kiss 73. You know, that goes back to, you know, the very beginnings of Kiss. That's an early one. Peter did it, obviously, at his final show in New York as well. And I was like, why is he doing that? And he explained, you know, the meaning of it to him. So I, I get it from that perspective. But when you look through the rest of the set list, and we'll get there at the end, you know, I really would have preferred something off the Fraley's Comet album at that point, just a remind. And yeah, I'm going to say, yeah, love me right. Uh, and everyone's going to say, no, we got your rock. Uh, you know? Um, but there should be something from there, and that to me was would be one of my criticisms of the set as and all that there's not enough non kiss a solo stuff represented in there, and rather than you know a some I I don't want to call it a throwaway track, but an uh, like you called it a strange decision to have Strutter in there. I think you know whether it's something off the first album, whether it's off something uh, you know Trouble Walking or even Anomaly at that point just would have been. Uh, a little bit smarter than three Kiss songs in a row. Yep, and, and I just, again, I don't get it. I love Strutter. It's a great song and everything else and stuff. I love the whole thing, but I, not for Ace. I come, I, I again, I, I really wish Ace would have played, like you said, Snowblind, Rip It Out, Rock Soldiers, you know, Insane, Trouble Walking, anything. A, anything off his solo stuff, man. He's got such... Great stuff, man. Out of space, you know, all that kind of stuff. You know, I I think 
I don't know who. I don't know who comes up with the, you know, the set list. You know, when they go into the meetings and say, "Hey, man, let's do this or let's do that." Maybe they're thinking, "Hey, man, now that we're going to be in front of a bigger crowd, I got to play something that people are more know about." You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Instead of playing the deep cuts. Well, but yeah, he does have to to a certain extent because as an opening act for Alice Cooper, you've already kind of explained the differentiation between the audience that you're, you're somewhat outnumbered by the Alice Cooper fans. So yeah, he's into doing <laughs> a kid. You know, everyone remembers is you know let's let's be that that casual Alice Cooper fan who has heard of Kiss and knows Ace Frehley from Kiss and maybe knows you know the same songs that the die, the non diehards expect for Kiss. So I think he's probably catering a little bit more because if he starts doing shit off second sighting or or you know uh, going deep cuts for Fraley fans, he's going to lose that audience and he's got a, a shorter set, a limited amount of time to present his material. So the sad part is, is that he's, you know, just selling albums for Universal rather than having people buy his current catalog from E1. Yeah, but he, here's, the, here's the thing. Who cares? Who cares about, you know, the Alice Cooper fans if they don't, don't never seen Ace before? If you never, if they... You wouldn't believe how many people in the lot in their area said, hey, I've never seen Ace before. This is the first time. So they're not going to know anyways. They're not going to know Strutter compared to, oh, where's Strutter coming from or, or where Snowblind came from. Come on, man. Put put Strutter and Snowblind together, man. Ace cranks the guitar. He's a guitarist. Heavy guitar cranks, right? You know what I mean? This is what Ace was famous for, his guitar work. So I would rather hear... Ozone over Strutta for that reason, and I don't really care if Cooper fans didn't like it or like it anyways, because either they're gonna like it or not anyways. Yeah, you know. I, okay, I, I I'm gonna agree with you that there should at least be <laughs> one one token Ace deep cut for the Ace fans who are making the road trips to see Alice Cooper. Yeah, there's probably more crossover in that direction of Ace Fraley fans who are also fans of Alice Cooper than there are of yeah. Alice Cooper fans who are also fans of Ace Fraley. True, probably. And it was a great amount of, you could call them A slash Kiss fans there last night. You could you could hear them. There's a lot of cheering and a lot of going on. So there, there was a good amount of, you know, we'll see tonight. You know, yeah, same you, thing. You know, we're, we're all brethren of theatrical 70s rock. So, you know, whether you're an Alice fan, whether you're a Kiss fan. So, you know, th there's not that much separation between the two, the amount of influence Alice had on Kiss anyway. Yeah. So, all right. I'm good. <laughs> All right, next. Where and now, from how this has been written down, um, it looks like he did a medley of stuff of Origins yeah. Volume Two, and I hate medleys w with a passion when they're presented in the middle of a set, rather than being, say, a fun one where they noodle around different rare cuts and have fun, uh, or they throw you know, snow blind, uh, stuff off, uh, trouble walking and all that sort of stuff, or I'm in need of love, giving a taste of that, uh, which uh, oddly, that's just a nice segue for a second. I just read uh, a review of a show from Spider in 1979. Anton Fig was, of course, a member of Spider um, with Holly Knight. And in this club review, he was doing I'm in need of love live with that band in 79. So coming off doing Ace's album, into the clubs in New York, someone probably recorded it. If you recorded Spider, or they were called Siren before that, um, and have a version of I'm in Need of Love by that band, I would love to hear it. Yeah, I'm in need of, I'm in need of love. All right, back to this medley, starting with She. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, he said that, uh, he said that, you know, he's on a time, you know, a time, you know, they only have so much time, da da da, so he's got, I'm going to, we're going to play a medley. And then they went into it. So they went into she. You know, let's start out with she. You're going to, you're going to have probably all written down there because I can't remember all, like, in a row right now. My brain is still fine. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll lead you through it. They start with she and then into Manic yeah. Depression, which is, a, 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 again, a really great thing for that amount of guitar on the stage. How was that live? Um, and, and in each one of these songs as we go, you know, I'd like to know how it was, how, how it was for you, Andy. Was it good? Um, you know, you, you know me personally? No. I, I and I understand why Ace did it because those are some of his heroes, you know, some of his guitar things. But 
I come to see Ace Frehley. You know what I mean? I would. I wish he did a medley of Ace Frehley songs. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I that's because because I've seen you know, I've seen Ace so many times through the years since the '80s. You know, for the solo tours and all that stuff. And he used to do medleys, and he used to do a lot of medleys with his stuff and his stuff in between. You know, kind of a mix. So I would rather hear. Again, I'm going to see Ace Freely. I want to hear Ace Freely stuff. You know, even Kim said the same thing. You know, I, I don't. I don't. You know, if I want to turn, on, you could turn on any radio anytime and hear a Led Zeppelin song. Sorry. Yeah, but he's promoting. I, I think it's important to also remember that he's promoting Origins Volume Two. This is the tour for the album a year late because of COVID and all the shit that's gone down. You yeah. know, in that. So, it, it, and especially being a condensed set, did he say anything about this? Is from the new album, Origins Volume Two. Uh, did he? Yeah, prom- did he promote his I, stuff? Yeah, he kind of mentioned. You know, I, I get the Origins Two, blah blah blah, and then you know this this and that. So I kind of get it that way, but it's kind of. I, I guess since everything's been pushed off like a whole year, <laughs> you know it, what I mean? It, it feels weird, especially when being combined with being in an opening slot with a limited, you know, length uh, of your set. I think it's probably the best way that they do it. They go, oh, so they do Hendrix's Manic Depression into Mountains, Never in My Life. I got to find a recording of that from last night because that's the one I was most, uh, you know, that and Space Trucking were my two kind of wish lists uh, from this album to be performed. Formed. Well, I'll, I'll 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 do it tonight. <laughs> Boy, yeah, yeah the, there's already a, a ton of video, but again, with uh, oh, I, I got to focus, I got to focus on the eBay customers and getting their orders out, uh, and then closing with good times, bad times from the medley. So uh, you you've already said you you can turn, turn you can turn on classic rock radio to listen to any of those songs. Um, I and think those play- are, are good safe ones as well. Uh, well, they played a lot of the uh, Zeppelin at the end. You know, basically, almost played the whole song. It wasn't like cut that much. I mean, the crowd was okay with it. They're like, "Yeah," you know what I mean. But there were more cheers for his stuff than that stuff. Believe it or not. Just good. Saying. Good. No, that 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 that's you know really good for him to kind of know. And then they kick into the very obvious, all too obvious, Detroit Rock City. Yeah, and um, you know. I understand why they play because, you know, the guitar thing, everybody, fans know the song and they wanted to give some, uh, oh my God, I forget the game names of the guys, everybody else a chance to sing, you know, and uh, he can sing Detroit Rock City pretty good. And believe it or not, the crowd after it was done went absolutely wild. Hmm. They did. It was cra- It was like, wow. It was like a huge, huge cheer for Detroit Rock City. Humongous. So... I get it. You know what I mean? So I get it. So a lot of people, even if they're not, say, <laughs> KISS fans at all, they, they, they heard Detroit Rock City. Oh, yeah. You know, again, it's, it's, an, it's a no-brainer. And uh, yeah. I'll just give you the lineup. You, you, you got Jeremy Asrock um, on guitar. Um, how, to, how to describe him? He looks, got a little bit of a Randy Rhodes vibe going. Um, you got Ryan. He's, he's the big hairy fella he a bit of a crabby vibe a great singer as well uh all of them yeah. are great singers and great guitars those are, those are the two additional guitars i uh, phil shouse the mighty phil shouse on bass guitar um and i don't know who's on drums i don't pay attention unfortunately uh it's his matt star his usual drummer hope so because yeah, he's, he, he's freaking awesome he slams yep. those skins and he's just really really good and fun to watch great band to back up ace always well, on point see and that's another thing that like matt's like so good of a drama i thought they would play some of the more like like a rip it out and stuff because it's got that those drums that go all over the place and shit you know what i mean <laughs> so i thought they would like give him more of a you know that kind of thing so anyways Maybe they'll do. Maybe one of these days they'll do wiped out and give him the opportunity to do the old Safaris version of the intro before kicking into Ace's song, because that that would be really fun and you get to see him play that. That's one of those drummer test uh, intros. Any of that stuff. All right. So after Detroit Rock City gets a great response into New York Groove, which come on, Ace's signature. Everyone knows that song. It's in commercials. It's all over the place. Uh, how did that go down? 
Oh, of course. Of course. Everybody knows it. Bryce brings out the lighted guitar and people have never, some people have never seen it. Like, wow, look at that thing. You know, <laughs> it's funny how some people don't even like, get, like know anything. It's kind of, it was kind of interesting, you know, but people are all like, you know, doing the whole thing, dan- 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 dancing in the aisle and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Because that's basically, you know, the song, you know, everybody knows. It's really New York group, right? That's his. The crowd response is good. You know, they loved it. They went crazy over it. It's a, and I know it. A guy, I'm like, yeah, it's in there. <laughs> so it's always going to be that's you know, it's like kisses rock and roll night. That's this is Ace really New York Roof, right? That's yep. his thing. And we're we're into the tail end now of the show because New York Groove lighted guitar, shocked me with Ace's solo. Did he bring out the smoker and did it manage yeah. to smoke? Yeah, he brought the smoker. I did a video of it. Yep, Ace is on. You know, uh, you know, same solo from all these years, but still. It's, how did that? I, how did that go down with the Alice fan? Uh, with the Alice fans, because I, I were more strolling in by that point. You know, was it filling up a bit more? Was the music yeah, okay. that Ace was playing bringing in the stragglers from the bar and the merch stands? Yeah, I think uh, by the time <laughs> more near the end, uh, more people started filling in, like some of the seats that were kind of empty here and there, and. Uh, I mean, I didn't. Love, I wasn't looking behind me, but you know, it, it was filling in more and more as the as the thing kept going. You know, like I said, the merch lines and everything was it was you know pretty crazy, man. There's a lot of people, man, buying a lot of stuff. So yeah, yeah, it was fun. And know? then we then we get into the last two songs, and I hate this ending. Um, Cold Gin. Yeah, uh, it went over well. You know, people were like singing. Kind of dancing with it, singing, and it got a huge applause. Yeah, it's good. It's it's a good song. I just don't like it that that part of the the set. You know, tail end. It just drops the tempo down a bit too much for my taste. Where I, I always feel, you know, you should be ending on a high energetic note rather than you know you go from the fire in the smoking guitar you know, and the solo histrionics of Shock Me, which is always awesome, always epic, always fun, never boring, always a bit concerning about. Is it gonna smoke? Is it not gonna smoke? <laughs> Is Ace gonna end up throwing a guitar? You know, into and then you just like boom, bring it down with cold gin. So great song, uh, you know. And again, it's not the song; it's just its placement for me. You know, you got to have it in the right place for my taste. But again, that's personal preference. Everyone's mileage varies. Yep, I, I it went over well, and I love the song. He wrote it to me. It's all good. Uh, Kim loved it too. She's like, "Yeah, I love this stuff." Because uh, you know, he wrote it. It's all good. Sounds different. And then uh, what they do at the end of Cold Gen, it goes right into uh, what is it? Jeez, uh, Black Diamond, right? Deuce. No, nope. no, you get the Black Diamond. Don't forget, Black Diamond was played. I think at the end of Cold Gen, like oh, the, the, end the black, of- the little Black Diamond outro thing. Yeah, yeah, at yeah. The end. Yeah, he's done yeah. that. Done that for years. Which, uh, again, it's a cool way just to sneak in a little touch because, uh, you know, it always works. And then he goes into Deuce, doesn't he? Then he goes this. And I figured this was going to be the last song. I love Deuce. Deuce never gets old. You know what it I mean? Doesn't. It doesn't. It, it's all, I don't care where he puts this in the set. It could be first song, last song, middle song. He could play it five times in a row. Or Kiss can do the same. Deuce is my gotta. And whether it's Ace, whether it's Kiss, you know, God, God bless him, Vinnie Vincent, if he plays, if he does Deuce, he'll make me happy too. Yeah, I love Deuce. It, it, the way it does it, the whole groove, the whole thing. And, of course, everybody knows that's basically, you know, the first song and first solo that Ace ever played with Gene and Paul, you know, yeah, when he that's, came in. That's, that's his tryout bit, you know, so it's special. That's, that, that is, that's, you know, that's, that's the foundational, me. that's the marriage ring. Yeah, and that's awesome. So, and the crowd responded really good because they did all the things and they're having a little fun. So it went over really well. So now, I thought it was now now seeing Ace through the years and seeing him with the new guys playing. I thought the guys were like, I've seen the guy when they play; they're usually energetic. You know, they're kind of running around a little bit. They were not like kind of running around. They were kind of just there. I don't want to say that, like, just there, but they were there. They weren't running around like you used to see them, you know, like you see them at the Expo when they play when Ace did his thing in Jersey. Those guys are kind of, like, running around, you know, dancing around more, moving around. Those guys are kind of, like, hanging back, doing their thing, which is fine. They're doing their thing, and it's really good. It sounds good. But they weren't, like, 
into it. I don't know if it's just it was their first night of the tour and they don't want to, like, you know, get tired too soon, you know, because it's the first night. I don't know. I don't know. But it didn't seem as energetic as they usually seen them, like, when they played in the theaters or the clubs and stuff like that. I don't know. Just me? Well, does health and safety play a, a part in that? You know, are are they not going to be spitting COVID picks at the audience like Paul Stanley? You know, were they throwing picks and, and sticks yeah. and stuff? So, um, again, maybe there are limitations on what they're able to do with their, their stage real estate. That'd be interesting to ask them. Phil, Ryan, Jeremy, Matt, you know, um, were you tired last night or is there something that you're doing specifically for the show or is it to make ace not because ace doesn't move around a lot is it not to upstage him there, there's a lot of variables was it just you know was the stage small you said it was a smallish venue so you know there can well, be a, a plethora of reasons they had plenty of space though i mean it's a smaller venue compared well, he's to ace he's, he's got his own gravity well he, they've got all the space in the world with ace well, tonight's actually small. I think it's 5,200 people it only holds. So it's a, it's a new place they just opened in Connecticut, so it's even smaller. But, you know what I'm saying? But I mean, even at the convention, right? Those conventions have, like, little teeny stages, and those guys are, like, bouncing around. You know? You know? So I thought, like I said, I, I don't know if they're... They, I wouldn't even call it upstage and ace if they, if they kind of, like, bounce around. I don't think it's a big deal. Me, personally, I don't think it's a big deal if the guy, people bounce around. Because look at... Uh, uh, you know what the, the, the new uh, Nina Nina Strauss mm -hmm. Alice Cooper the incredible Nina she is uh, I'll tell you right now people if you've never seen her play or you've even just seen it she is like a like she's a ball of fire she's a wor everywhere a whirling dervish as well on the fretboard extraordinarily talented guitarist um, she's in place she's yeah in she's like running around like like a little kid so you know that's what I thought was, you know, I, I don't know. Maybe they'd say, "Hey, you gotta, you gotta lay back." You know, you can't like. Your mic's your right mic's gone weird. So can you shout at your mic for a second and and kick it back into normal? Can you hear me now? <laughs> no, you, you, you're right now. You're in a in a coconut tin. Uh, that's kind of weird. Um, before we wrap up, I got two things I, I want to ask you. How, you stayed for Alice. Yeah, I stayed for Alice. I wish. I wish Ace had a longer set, you know, get, get 10 more minutes, 15 more minutes, so I can hear some more songs. Oh, we did stay for Alice. Uh, uh, you know, Alice had like a, 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 kind of like a skull kind of thing background, like a castle, castle, thank you, thank you, myself, castle, and, uh, you know, the drum was like a little bit off to the side, and of course everybody out in the front, and, uh, I gotta say, man, Alice is like 73 now. Uh, he can still sing. You know, he's walking around like he always does, you know, mm -hmm. with his little props and stuff like that. But he can still sing pretty good. It was pretty good. Uh, yeah, I, 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 want to I want to find this recording because I'm looking at the set list. Uh, Tommy Denander, Tommy the Tommy, um, thank you for sharing that because he kicked off with one of my favorite. Alice songs, which is Feed My Frankenstein, um, yeah. which is, of course, Zodiac Mind Warp wrote that, and Alice changed a couple of words um, and put that on, but uh, I love that song. And then he's got Go Man Go, Under My Wheels, he's back the man behind the mask, so he's throwing in some deep cuts as far as uh, um, drum solo with Black Juju, Steven, Dead Babies, I Love the Dead, Escape. I mean, shit, that is a great set from Alice. I mean, that's got a lot of the hits, but also for Alice fans who are going to be like Kiss fans and want some deep cuts. And again, I'm not a uber Alice fan, so some of the things I may have just called as deep cuts, they're deep cuts to me. They may not be to an Alice fan who's sitting there going, well, he obviously knows nothing about Alice Cooper. No, I don't know anything about Alice Cooper. I'm a Kiss fan. And I know 90% of the stuff. I didn't know them all, but Kim and I agreed, though, at one point, you know, Nina went to a, it's a solo, and then the other guys went to solos, and then they did, like, a huge medley. Yeah, pick your phone up for a second, see if you can uh, just move the mic and get it to come back on just while we, we finish up here. All right, try Better. it. Let's see. Better? A little bit. Well, well, well you know, we've we've gotten all the good stuff in, so um, finish up your thoughts on Alice. Yeah, um, 
but, but Kim and I both agreed, like, Alice disappeared for, like, 20 minutes or something like that. It was weird. He just, like, disappeared, and they went into giant medleys and all kinds of stuff, and they were playing, like, you know, almost like a fish thing or whatever. And Dick Grateful Dead, it just kept going on and on and on. We're like, Alice just sang, like, 15 songs in a row, like, quick. He didn't stop, though. That was cool. He was, like, song after song after song after song. He wasn't talking a lot. He just kept playing, which was cool. And then all of a sudden, he disappears for, like, 20 minutes. And the rest of the band's just, like, playing. And all of a sudden, it's like, what happened? Kind of, like, it kind of killed it. It kind of killed the whole thing. And then, of course, we came back. You know, they did the babies thing. And then, of course, they ended with, uh, you know, uh, what do you call it? Jeez, I'm, I'm, like, dead zone today, man. Of course, they end with uh, schools out, you know, some confetti flies. They go with big, giant colored balloons with confetti and everybody's going around. And he's, you know, and then he's introducing the band and all this stuff and this and that. And he's like, yeah, who's playing Alice Cooper tonight? Me. And, of course, everybody's cheering and stuff. You know, so it was a good show. But it was just kind of weird that one part in the middle got kind of weird. But, you know, was that, was that the, after Was that after the drum solo that it got weird? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, because that's Black Juju. You know, that, that's yeah, a bit of art. That's a bit of art rock uh, from yeah. that time as well. Yeah. And then uh, I don't know it, it was fun. We we had fun, uh, you know. And then uh, I gotta say though, there wasn't any crap from you know Ace fans to Alice fans. It was like yeah, yeah, yeah you know, he sucks or you know, me like that. So everybody was cool like that. So there was no problems like that kind of stuff. But uh, you know, I did enjoy it. It was fun, but Rubber too. Ace and Alice played back in the 80s together, you know, when it's yep, 87. So back then I saw that stuff. So it's not like I didn't see, I've never seen Alice before, you know. So uh, this is a slow song Kim wanted to hear from Alice. I forgot the name of it. I guess it's it's a real slow song and it's I, she's not here to tell me. But uh, I don't know. I had a blast. We're going to go tonight. I'm not wearing costume or makeup because I am like exhausted and probably not good for me to do it, you know. You know, taking my meds, supposed to take my meds, makes me a little tired. And if I don't take the one, like, because at like 9, 10 o'clock, I started sweating last night. And it wasn't because of the costume. It's because I needed to take my pill, and it was in the car, and I didn't want to bring it in the arena. I didn't want any crap, da, da, da. So we're just going to go all the time, and we're, we're going to wear new shirts and just hang out. And, you know, I'll take some more pictures, some more videos, because, like, we're in the fifth row. I'm a little bit on the side, a little bit on the side. So I'll get some better pictures and some, you know, better videos for everybody and this place is small it's 5200 people so we'll see how it goes and uh you know i did though i had enjoyed it but i wish ace could play longer and i wanted to hear more deeper cuts so if you could play longer, you had more songs because you end up playing what nine songs in the medley yeah and that's why i'm interested to know tonight whether they change things around or they're just going to kind of stick to a standard form um that'll be interesting i don't care to be perfectly honest i think that's perfectly fine as an opening set there's always going to be little things that we can you know nitpick about but opening for alice cooper i think it's a great tour package i think it's the the one that a lot of kiss fans would have loved to see alice and kiss out together so you're getting alice and ace uh, so, so the original Kiss guitarist doing a lot of the songs that Kiss wouldn't do. So it's a, it's a win, no matter what. Get out there, get with your Ace Fraley fan buddies. You know, have a good time. Stick around for Alice because he's got a great band and obviously doing some great set lists as well, uh, mixing it up nicely. So uh, before we go, quick thoughts, and by that I do mean quick. Um, Obviously, the Kiss Destroyer 45th anniversary box was announced yesterday. You're you're, you're hardcore. You, what what are your thoughts on it? You happy? Does it appeal or what? Uh, when I saw the deluxe, I was like, oh, this is interesting because they put everything together. Uh, the only thing I thought was weird, uh, strange about it, in the whole deluxe thing, they didn't put the albums with the whole deluxe. I thought that was odd. Why didn't they put? the album in with the deluxe part of it and just charged the 250 bucks and i saw the price of the 200 i was like eh. but then the second thought was how close uh, is the stuff going to be to the original stuff you know like say the kiss army thing because the first thought i'm thinking to myself yep somebody's going to buy open and say hey this is original put on ebay no right? they are totally going to make it in a way that protects that there'll be a printing line just like on any of the repro stuff um oh, you you could be sure 
that they're smart enough and the people who are involved in the project have thought about that because there are too many people out there uh, now who will try and take advantage. And that's why it doesn't quite include absolutely everything that used to come with the original. There'll be different paper um, and, and no doubt we'll do a comparison or actually that'd be a great one for the Kiss My Wax guys to do as well, to do a comparison of the original 1976 things and the one that comes in the Destroyer 45 box set, just because that's their area of expertise. They could talk about the paper, they could talk about the size, put the information out there, do a pictorial as well so that people can read it, and don't get fooled by jackasses who want to rip you off. Yeah, but, but I did, uh, I did what, the CD, the CD is 20 bucks, so that's not bad, the two CD thing, yeah, right? Yeah, per per perfectly fine for people who just want that, you know, and uh, I'm, I'm going to do a show on this later this week, um, and we'll break it down a little bit more on that, but I just wanted to get your perspective, uh, it, it, you know, it, it, yes or no, does it excite you? You know, is that the sort of thing you've been waiting for as a fan to see all those demos listed and they're going to be in pristine quality, a lot of a, a hardcover book, uh, multiple versions of vinyl. You just mentioned the two CD set. There's a ton of new T-shirts up there as well to support it. Uh, five. What is it? The, the Super Audio Blu-ray done by one hell of a audio engineer. Um, so a remix. Yeah. You know that excites me. Um, I'm I'm like, hey, your voice is back. You're cool. Let's wrap. Say it, and then we'll wrap up while your voice is back. I I am I am kind of like eh, on it because I, I I have the original stuff. That's why. So I'm like, why do I want to buy kind of a repackage of two hundred dollars for that? But I did, like I said, I did buy the two CDs and I bought the colored vinyl. That cool. that was my thing. So I did that. So I'm good. I'm not. I'm like. I would like if, if one of my friends or somebody else buys the two hundred dollar package. If I see it personally, I want to really like look at it and say, "Hey, maybe it is worth it." But as of right now, not right now. Okay. I, so here's one of the last question: um, What would you like to see next? If they do, if they do something else, you know, what would be the one album that you'd pick to get this sort of treatment? Now that you've seen a kind of treatment idea um, for them to, that, that, who knows what they're going to do if they're going to do anything, but. What would you? Which album would you want done? Uh, well, how about how about not an album? How about the originals, the whole three set package? That's a cheap. I want I, I want you to name an album that you want to have deluxe. <laughs> I have to just take uh, an album. I'm, yeah, I'm doing market research right now uh, because I want to <sighs> know a remake. Oh my god, I don't even know. Um, wow, you really got me off guard because it's like trying to think. I love the originals, but uh, how about man? The eldest stuff's been done enough times. How about a package, a full package of creatures? I don't know. Okay, I put you. I put you on the spot. There we go, Andy. I want you to stay healthy tonight. Have fun at the show. Have have, have a great time. You take it easy, and uh, I'll I'll check your Facebook out later and tomorrow to see if there's any changes to the set list, or uh, whether Andy gives it a thumbs up or a thumbs down or a who knows. All right, Andy, thanks for joining me, and I will see you soon. Talk to you guys later. Thanks again, everybody, for the shout outs. <laughs> Thank you for spending time listening to the KISS FAQ podcast today. All sales are final. There are no refunds. If you'd like, look us up on Facebook or come over to the KISS FAQ message board and discuss the topic we've broadcast today. Don't forget to rate us on iTunes, Spreaker, or wherever you've listened to the show. We hope you'll join us again.